landscape screams problems to me. I mean, just look at the bathtub rings. To me, that is an enormous wake-up call. Lake Mead, located in the southwestern United States, specifically between Nevada and Arizona, is a major reservoir situated approximately 39 kilometers east of Las Vegas. This vast body of water came into existence as a result of the construction of the Hoover Dam on the Colorado River. Serving as a crucial water resource for the surrounding region, this is the largest reservoir in the United States. But in the past couple of years, things have changed drastically for the lake. It had its ups and downs and, well, right now, Lake Mead is rising. And this time, something terrifying is happening. Something huge has emerged. Tonight, we are uncovering new details about the human remains found inside of a barrel at Lake Mead. Join us as we uncover why Lake Mead just got closed off and what discovery has everyone so terrified. Lake Mead is no small body of water. It stretches an impressive 111 miles in length while reaching a maximum depth of 532 feet. The reservoir's elevation stands at an impressive 1,229 feet above sea level with a sprawling surface area encompassing 247 square miles. Just to put its immense capacity in perspective, Lake Mead carries a staggering 28.23 million acre-feet of water. That's more than any other reservoir in the US. Lake Mead holds immense significance beyond its sheer size due to its critical role in supplying water to lots of states and regions. It serves as a lifeline for Arizona, California, Nevada and specific parts of Mexico, catering to the water needs of over 20 million people that live in these areas. The reliance on Lake Mead's water extends beyond domestic use as it plays a pivotal role in sustaining extensive farmlands through irrigation. The availability of water from the reservoir supports manufacturing, energy generation and other commercial activities. Industries such as tourism, which thrive in the region due to attractions like Las Vegas, heavily rely on the sustained water supply from Lake Mead to cater to the needs of the variable population size from month to month because of the tourists. If you actually study the lake, even from the outset, you'd see how the reservoir's significance transcends its physical boundaries, serving as one of the most important components of the broader water management system in the southwestern United States. But the water in Lake Mead is now changing. Lake Mead had been rising over the last couple of months, a little at a time, but if you compare it to how things were just a year ago, you'll be able to see a massive difference. One significant influence on the rising water levels has been heavy rainfall in the surrounding area. Over the past few months, an influx of precipitation, particularly intense rainfall events, has contributed to the elevation of Lake Mead. This unanticipated abundance of rainfall has provided a boost to the reservoir's water levels, albeit to a limited extent. But that's not all. Another crucial factor behind the rise in Lake Mead's water level is the increased water releases from Lake Powell, facilitated by the US Bureau of Reclamation. In an effort to amp up Lake Mead's diminishing water resources, the Bureau has initiated larger water releases from Lake Powell, that's right, upstream on the Colorado River. The water released from the Glen Canyon Dam at Lake Powell flows downstream, replenishing Lake Mead. At the same time, though, there's also been a decrease in downstream demand, which has played a role in the recent increase in Lake Mead's elevation. Reduced water releases from the Hoover Dam attributed to a decline in downstream water requirements have contributed to the temporary rise in the reservoir's water level. This reduction in demand downstream allows for a greater portion of water to be retained within Lake Mead, contributing to the overall increase in its water capacity. One of the significant positive impacts of the rising water levels in Lake Mead is the improvement in water quality. When a lake is experiencing a decline in water levels and nearing depletion, the quality of the remaining water can deteriorate by a lot. 
Increased concentrations of pollutants and nutrients can accumulate in the dwindling water, leading to an imbalance in the lake's ecosystem and potential harm to aquatic life. However, with the refilling of Lake Mead, the influx of water helps to dilute these contaminants and restore the overall water quality. The replenishment of the lake allows for a more balanced distribution of pollutants and nutrients, reducing their concentrations and reducing the potential negative impacts on the ecosystem along with it. And it goes deep. The dilution effect of increased water levels can have a profound impact on the overall health and stability of the lake. It can help restore natural oxygen levels, which are crucial for supporting aquatic life. Adequate oxygen levels in the water promote the survival of fish, plants and other organisms, fostering a healthier and more diverse ecosystem within Lake Mead. On top of that, the improved water quality in Lake Mead has broader implications for water supply and conservation efforts. High-quality water is essential for meeting the increasing demands of a growing population in the region. By ensuring that the water sourced from Lake Mead is of good quality, it becomes more suitable for drinking, agricultural irrigation and industrial use. This in turn reduces the need for extensive water treatment processes, conserves resources and supports sustainable water management practices. But all things aren't really peachy and positive. Even though there's the possibility of contaminants being reduced because of the flow of water, there's also another side of things. One of the negative consequences of the rising water levels in Lake Mead is the potential release of pollutants. When a lake is in a state of decline, the exposed sediment, which may have accumulated pollutants and nutrients over time, can be resuspended and released into the newly refilled water. These contaminants can include heavy metals, pesticides, fertilizers and other harmful substances, and in less water, all of those are super concentrated. The sudden influx of these pollutants can have detrimental effects on the water quality of Lake Mead posing risks to aquatic life and potentially compromising the overall ecosystem health. The erosion and damage to shoreline communities are additional concerns associated with rising water levels. As the water level increases, it can exacerbate erosion processes and result in beach loss along the lake's shore. The powerful force of the rising water can erode the shoreline, leading to the loss of valuable land, infrastructure and even private properties. This erosion can have significant economic implications, requiring costly repairs and protective measures for shoreline communities to prevent further damage. In some cases, the construction of dams and reservoirs to create lakes like Lake Mead can also have social and environmental impacts. The flooding of vast areas of land to create a reservoir often requires the relocation of communities residing in those areas. These communities may have long-established historical, cultural and ancestral ties to the land. Forced relocation can result in significant social disruption as communities are uprooted from their homes and familiar surroundings. The loss of their land and livelihoods can have a profound effect on their well-being social cohesion and cultural heritage. Plus, the flooding caused by reservoir creation can lead to the submergence of archaeological sites, historical landmarks and culturally significant areas. These sites may hold immense value in terms of cultural heritage, preserving the history and identity of indigenous communities or showcasing important aspects of human civilization. The irreversible loss of such cultural heritage can have profound implications for future generations who may lose touch with their ancestral roots and cultural identity. Even the thought of entire communities and their history being wiped out is absolutely terrifying. But that's not limited to indigenous communities either. The construction of reservoirs can result in significant alterations to natural ecosystems too. All of the flooding leads to the submergence of vegetation, forests and wildlife habitats. The loss of terrestrial ecosystems and their conversion into aquatic environments can disrupt the delicate balance of biodiversity. 
This alteration can negatively impact the planet adapted to specific habitats, potentially leading to the loss of plant and animal species. Many animal species rely on specific migration patterns to fulfill their life cycle requirements. These migrations often involve moving between different habitats such as breeding grounds, feeding areas and wintering sites. When a reservoir is created, it can disrupt these natural migration routes by obstructing or altering the flow of rivers and water bodies. As a result, wildlife may encounter barriers that impede their movement, leading to significant challenges in reaching their essential habitats. Disrupted migration patterns can disrupt breeding cycles, mess with the access to food sources and limit opportunities for genetic diversity and adaption. The entire ecosystem is affected. You see, ecosystems are interconnected networks of organisms, with each species playing a role in the food chain. Reservoir construction can alter the availability and distribution of food resources for wildlife. For example, flooding can submerge vegetation, depriving herbivores of their primary food sources. In turn, this can affect the predators that rely on these herbivores for sustenance. Changes in food availability can disrupt the delicate balance of predator-prey relationships and lead to population declines or imbalances in the affected ecosystem. But that's not the only way the lake ends up affecting the world around it. Wildlife species often require specific habits for breeding and reproduction. These habitats may include wetlands, riverbeds or shallow areas near the shore. When reservoirs are created, these breeding habits can be submerged, destroyed or altered, depriving species of their crucial breeding grounds. This loss can have significant consequences as it may impede successful reproduction and the recruitment of new individuals to the population. Over time, the lack of suitable breeding habits can lead to population declines and even the local extinction of species. Sometimes, though, the wildlife doesn't go extinct, they just get broken up. Drastic changes in the water levels can fragment previously contiguous habitats, dividing them into isolated patches. Fragmentation can pose challenges for wildlife by creating physical barriers that limit movement, gene flow and access to resources. Animals accustomed to larger habitats may struggle to adapt to the smaller, fragmented areas. This can result in reduced population sizes, increased competition for limited resources and a higher risk of inbreeding. Eventually, the animal kingdom in the area would start to look totally different than it once did, which can also have a massive impact on the entire area, not just the places right next to the lake. But probably the worst of it all is that ecological disruptions can alter the dynamics of disease transmission within ecosystems. Displaced wildlife may come into closer contact with human populations, increasing the potential for the spread of diseases that can be transmitted from animals to humans. Loss of natural habitats and the associated changes in the ecological balance can disrupt the natural checks and balances that help regulate disease transmission. This can have implications for public health and require additional resources for disease surveillance and management. There have actually been historical examples where ecological disruptions and the loss of natural habitats have influenced disease dynamics and led to the increased transmission of diseases like these. One of the biggest examples here is the emergence of Lyme disease in the northeastern United States. Lyme disease is caused by the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi, which is primarily transmitted to humans through the bite of infected black-legged ticks. The disease was first identified in the town of Lyme, Connecticut in the 1970s. But what's crazy is that the spread of Lyme disease has been linked to changes in land use patterns and changes in the natural water in the area, along with deforestation and habitat fragmentation. As human activities encroach upon natural habitats, it can disrupt the ecological balance and lead to changes in the distribution and numbers of wildlife species, including diseases. In the case of Lyme disease, the loss of forested habitats and the subsequent increase in edge habitats, which are the areas where forest meets human-modified landscapes, 
have resulted in higher populations of white-footed mice, which are the primary reservoir hosts for Lyme disease bacteria. These mice are also the preferred hosts for the black-legged ticks that transmit the disease to humans. So if you think about it, even if the ticks themselves don't make it to the humans and bite them, the mice could transport them to more densely populated areas and increase the chances for human-tick encounters, leading to an increased risk of contracting Lyme disease. The disruption of natural habitats and changes in ecological balance can create conditions that favor the transmission of zoonotic diseases like Lyme disease. And it can happen super silently, so most people don't even see the danger coming until it's too late. Similar examples can be found in other parts of the world as well. For instance, deforestation and land use changes in Southeast Asia have been associated with the emergence of zoonotic diseases like the Nipah virus and various strains of coronaviruses, including the one responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic. These diseases have been linked to interactions between wildlife, domestic animals and humans in areas where habitats are altered or encroached upon. It's important that the areas where animals thrive are protected and there aren't any major changes that could affect the way they live. While most of the things are related to the water increasing in Lake Mead, there's another threat on the other side of things too. You see, while Lake Mead's water has been slowly increasing for the better part of the decade, water has been dwindling down to almost nothing. The western United States is currently experiencing a mega drought. That means that there's been an extended and severe period of drought lasting for decades or longer. This ongoing mega drought is considered the most severe in the region in over a millennium and has had a profound impact on various major reservoirs, including Lake Mead. The prolonged lack of precipitation and reduced runoff from tributaries have significantly diminished the inflow of water into the reservoir. That's because the Rocky Mountains, a vital source of water for the Colorado River, experience reduced snowpack due to rising temperatures and altered precipitation patterns associated with climate change. Snowpack serves as a natural reservoir, slowly releasing water during the spring and summer months as it melts. However, with reduced snowpack, less water is available to flow into the Colorado River and ultimately replenish Lake Mead. The effects of climate change, including rising temperatures and prolonged drought, have exacerbated the water scarcity issues in the region. Rising temperatures lead to increased evaporation rates, causing more water loss from the reservoir. Moreover, the persistent drought conditions associated with climate change have resulted in a continuous decline in water levels over the past two decades. These climate-related factors, coupled with the ongoing mega-drought, have significantly reshaped the shorelines of Lake Mead. But the problem is, the demand for water has risen due to population growth and expanding agricultural needs in the region. As the population increases, more water is required for residential, commercial and industrial purposes. Additionally, agricultural activities demand significant amounts of water for irrigation. The combined effect of increased demand for water and limited supply has led to an imbalance, resulting in more water being withdrawn from Lake Mead than is being replenished through natural processes. This puts the lake at a dangerous 50-50 point. On one hand, you have the recent issue in the waters, which can have both positive and negative effects on the environment. On the other, you've got the decades of decrease, which has only gotten faster and faster as time has gone on. Two parallels are existing at about the same time for a lake this massive and something like this can't be good. The prolonged period of drought that Lake Mead has experienced has created a delicate ecological balance within the reservoir and its surrounding ecosystem, as we've discussed earlier on in the video. As the water level steadily declined over the years, the environment and the organisms within it adapted to the arid conditions. Plant species with drought-tolerant characteristics took root and animal populations adjusted their behaviours to cope with limited water resources. But the sudden increase in water levels brings a disruption to this finely tuned balance. While it may seem beneficial to have more water available, the rapid rise can pose significant challenges for the ecosystem. 
the sudden inundation of dry land areas that were previously exposed can have adverse effects on the organisms that have adapted to the drought conditions. You see, the newly submerged shoreline areas may lack suitable habitats for certain plant species that require drier conditions to thrive. This can lead to the loss of plant biodiversity and disrupt the natural vegetation patterns around the lake. Additionally, animal species that have become adapted to the drought may face difficulties in adjusting to the sudden availability of water. Their foraging and nesting behaviors, as well as migration patterns, may be disrupted, which can impact their survival and reproductive success, leading to possible fragmentation. But it's not just that. The rapid increase in water levels can lead to the release of accumulated pollutants and sediments from the exposed dry land areas. In essence, the dangers of Lake Mead facing years of drought followed by a sudden increase in water lie in the disruption of the finely balanced ecosystem that has adapted to the arid conditions. The sudden shifts in water levels can impact the diverse array of species that have adapted to survive under specific environmental conditions. It highlights the intricate interdependencies within the ecosystem and the potential challenges faced by both natural habitats and human communities.